Good morning, and welcome to online worship at Lemoore Presbyterian Church. We're glad you're joining us today, and we hope you feel like part of our church family. If you're a guest with us this morning, we invite you to explore our website and our Facebook page so that we can get to know each other better. And whether you're new or a longtime member, go ahead and check in to Lemoore Presbyterian Church on Facebook. Hit the like button on this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications so that you'll always know when a new video is posted. Let us begin worship by pledging our allegiance to Jesus Christ using the following affirmation of faith. We believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. We are convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, whose face is hidden from us by our sins, and whose mercy we forget in the blindness of our hearts, cleanse us from all our offenses and deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires, that with reverent and humble hearts we may draw near to you, confessing our faults, confiding in your grace, and finding in you our refuge and strength. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Hear the good news. While we were still sinners, Christ died and rose for us. Anyone in Christ is a new creation. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun Sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, oh my soul His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I'll worship your holy name Your rich is love so to anger Your name is great your heart is kind, for all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Still my soul will sing your praise, my name. 
like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. Yes, I'll worship your holy name. Our first reading will be from John chapter 15, verses 12 through 17. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. This is the word of the Lord. This sermon series on 1 Peter is about the new hope that we have in Jesus Christ. But you can't talk about that hope without also talking about sin. Even in these divided times, I think we can all agree that sin is bad. What is less obvious, however, is the best way to manage it. Turns out the best thing to do is actually to stop trying to manage it. Let us pray. God, our helper, by your Holy Spirit, open our minds that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may be led into your truth and taught your will. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture this week is from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. In order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Before Martin Luther discovered the grace of God as described in Paul's letter to the church in Rome, he was obsessed with managing his sin. He believed that his salvation depended on being good enough for God, and he would spend hours every day confessing his sins, including the ones he didn't even know he had committed. Now, because he was a very passionate and disciplined man, he was actually better than most at managing his sin. But the more he tried to manage it, the more it managed him. Because his life was all about sin management, his life was all about sin. Sin was running and ruining his life, even when he was trying to avoid it. Peter tells us to be self-controlled for the sake of our prayers. In order for us to pray properly for the things of God's kingdom, we must be self-controlled. Self-control is a virtue that, of course, is esteemed by our society and every other society that I know of, and it is reinforced time and again in our culture. Logic offers a serenity humans seldom experience. The control of feelings so that they do not control you. You must learn to control it. 
Control. Control. You must run control. Self-control is a good thing. It's a virtue that is worth cultivating. But that doesn't mean that self-control is the right tool for every job. There are some things in life that must be handled with a different tool, and one of those things is sin. Notice that Peter said, be self-controlled for the sake of your prayers, not for the sake of your sins. Self-control can help with lots of things, including our prayer life, but it's not very helpful for managing sin. As long as you are trying to manage the sin in your life through sheer self-control, sin will end up managing your life. That's because managing sin by self-control requires you to keep your attention on sin at all times. And when your attention is always on sin, whether or not you're doing it, then even the sin you're not committing is managing your life. Self-control will never set you free from sin. It's not the right tool for the job. The only tool that sets us free from sin is love. Self-control may help with prayer, but according to Peter, it is love that covers a multitude of sins. Love covers sin like a wet blanket covers a fire. It smothers it and deprives it of oxygen. Love smothers sin. It doesn't manage it. It asphyxiates it. At the end of the Gulf War, when Iraqi forces were retreating, they set fire to over 700 oil wells in Kuwait, sending columns of fire and black smoke into the air for months. To put them out, the Allied forces recruited the help of a specially outfitted Soviet tank named Windy. Windy had a pair of MiG-21 jet engines attached to it and six water hoses that pulled water from a four million gallon reservoir nearby. Windy's job was to crawl up to within 25 feet of the flame and then turn on the engines. And the 27,000 pounds of thrust generated by the engines was then mixed with water from the hoses, which flowed at 220 gallons per second, which is fast enough to empty a swimming pool in less than a minute. The water mixed with the exhaust to become a ferocious spray of steam that was blasted at the base of the fire to cut off the supply of oil from the flames. With the fuel supply cut off, the fire was finally put out. Love smothers sin. It cuts off sin's fuel supply until sin has nothing left to do but die. When you are struggling with sin, don't try to manage it with self-control. That might work for a while, but nobody can keep it up forever. Instead, fill your life with love and it will smother the sin in your life. That's what Peter means when he says that we should show hospitality to one another and use our gifts to serve one another. Hospitality and service aren't just random acts of kindness. They are specific acts that keep you so busy with love that you no longer have the time for sin. The busier you are with love, the freer you will be from sin. Hospitality and service take time and energy which means less time and energy for sin. Sin thrives on boredom and free time and emptiness. It was Chaucer who wrote that idle hands are the devil's tools. But love, on the other hand, keeps our hands busy and crowds out the sin in our life until it's got nowhere to breathe. Instead of trying to manage the sin in your life, fill your life with love. Get busy with things like hospitality and service, whether that's volunteering to buy groceries for someone during the pandemic, or serving food at a soup kitchen, writing encouraging cards, 
becoming a court-appointed special advocate for kids in foster care, or one of a thousand other opportunities. The busier you are with love, the less time and energy you'll have for sin. The more your life is defined by love, the less it will be defined by sin. At funerals, no one ever talks about how well the deceased managed their sin. They talk about how well they loved. A friend of mine struggled for years with a sin that he couldn't shake. It was an addiction, really, and he tried to manage it with self-control and sheer force of will. Sometimes that would work for a while, but inevitably he would relapse, and the cycle of sin would continue. Eventually, he gave up. He realized that the love of Jesus was either enough to forgive his sin, even if he didn't stop sinning, or it wasn't. Whether or not he stopped sinning had no effect on whether or not Jesus loved him and forgave him. So he stopped trying to stop sinning and instead focused his attention on the love of God and on loving others. Within two weeks, the sin he could never manage had been completely smothered. Now he's careful to say that the addiction is still there. Addiction never goes away, but that sin no longer has any room to breathe in his life. He stopped sinning when he stopped trying to stop sinning and instead started loving. Now, this does not mean that anyone should ignore the clinical and medical aspects of addiction. I want to be clear that I'm not saying that if you just start loving, your addiction will go away. Any sin that involves the chemistry of addiction will also require solutions and treatments that address that aspect of it. Whether that's AA or some form of therapy or medication. What I am saying is that however your sin manifests itself, love will smother it better than you can manage it. When you're busy with love, sin will suffocate. And that brings glory to God. Peter says we should smother our sins with love in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. When we smother sin with love, we are loving one another as Jesus has loved us. God did not send Jesus into the world to give us a new approach to sin management. Jesus did not come to inspire us toward greater self-control. Jesus is God's loving answer to our sin problem. Jesus smothered our sin with his love and stopped the cycle of sin, repent, repeat. And it glorifies him not only to do that for us, but also when we do that for each other. So whether you're struggling with sin in your own life, or struggling to figure out how to respond to someone else's sin. Remember that self-control is not the right tool for that job. Love is what smothers sin and glorifies God. It is always the right answer, always the right response, and always ready and waiting for us in Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace at times. My fears relieve. How precious in that grace of the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, 
has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing Your continued generosity to Limor Presbyterian Church is making a difference in our community. The gospel is being preached and needs are being met through our ministry and the ministry of our local partners. If you are in a position to give, you can mail a check to the church P.O. box. You can also donate online through our website or set up automatic giving through your own bank. However you choose to give, May the Lord use your gifts to glorify his name and establish his kingdom. Through Christ. Amen. Once again, we are celebrating communion today in our homes. You may use whatever elements you have available for the bread and the cup. And if you need to take a moment and prepare those now, you can go ahead and pause the video to do so. Friends, this table is how God deals with sin. Not by managing it, but by taking it upon himself and smothering it with his sacrificial love. In the body and blood of Jesus, sin was allowed to do its worst and was vanquished. Its power has been completely exhausted and found wanting in the face of God's love which reaches to the heavens. In the bread and the cup, we not only remember but truly receive the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is his table, and as such, it is open to everyone who calls Jesus Christ Lord and Savior. Let us pray. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Praise to you, O God, for all your works. You created the world and called it good and made us in your image to live together in love. 
You made a covenant with us, and even when we turned from you, you remained ever faithful. We thank you, O God, for sending us your Son. He lived among us and told your story. He healed the sick and welcomed sinners. He shared our pain and died our death, then rose to new life that we might live and all creation be restored. We give you thanks, remembering your boundless love revealed to us in Jesus Christ. We break bread and share the cup, giving ourselves to you to live for him in joy and praise. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, and that we may be his body for the world and that we may be his body for the world. By your spirit, unite us with Christ and one another until we feast with him and with all your saints in your eternal realm of justice and peace. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As you celebrate communion in your home, you may wish to pass the bread and the cup to one another by saying, this is the body of Christ broken for you, and this is the blood of Christ shed for you. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. If you have a prayer request to share with us, we would love to pray for you. You can share requests by calling the church office or by contacting us online through our website or through our Facebook page and group. Keeping in mind that the posts to the Facebook page are public while posts in the group will remain private. Let us pray for the needs of the church, the whole human family, and all the world saying, hear our prayer. That churches of all traditions may discover their unity in Christ and exercise their gifts in service of all. We pray to you, O God, hear our prayer. That the earth may be freed from war, famine, and disease, and the air, soil, and waters cleansed of poison. We pray to you, O God, hear our prayer. That those who govern and maintain peace in every land may exercise their powers in obedience to your commands. We pray to you, O God, hear our prayer. That you will strengthen this nation to pursue just priorities so that the races may be reconciled, the young educated, and the old cared for, the hungry filled, and the homeless housed, and the sick comforted and healed, we pray to you, O God, hear our prayer. That you will preserve all who live and work in this community in peace and safety, we pray to you, O God, hear our prayer. that you will comfort and empower those who face any difficulty or trial, the sick, the disabled, the poor, the oppressed, those who grieve and those in prison. We pray to you, O God, hear our prayer. That this pandemic will abate and give way to better days of health, prosperity, justice, and human connection. 
We pray to you, O oh God, hear our prayer that you will accept our thanksgiving for all faithful servants of Christ now at rest, who with us await a new heaven and a new earth, your everlasting kingdom, for which we now pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sin will always be a struggle this side of the kingdom. You will encounter it in yourself, and in others every day. And when you do, may you be ready to respond with the same love with which you have been loved in Jesus Christ, who is with you on your right and on your left, Christ before you, Christ behind you, Christ above you, Christ beneath you, and Christ within you, the hope of glory. Abide in his name. Amen.